Welcome to Class Valuation's New Hire Training Series. Our focus in this module is on appraisal report writing and is intended to guide a real estate appraiser, a user of appraisal services like an employee at a lender or an appraisal management company, or for that matter, any other reader of an appraisal report through the form. Our attention is being paid to the 1004 Uniform Residential Appraisal Report, or URAR, which is used for single-family homes only and is the most commonly used residential appraisal form for real property appraisals, and it is used for origination purposes in mortgage financial transactions. The form was introduced in its current format in 2005, and it remains relatively unchanged as of today. The 1004 URAR is not intended to be used for individual condominium units, manufactured homes, cooperative units, or two- to four-family investment properties. Appraisers are bound by the Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice, also known as USPAP, and the responsibility of completing the report is in the hands of the appraiser. The 1004 URAR was designed with general appraisal practices in mind, which include industry standard guidelines from the GSEs, FHA, VA, etc. But the forms themselves are not USPAP compliant as written, and because the standards change, it is the signing appraiser who must ensure that the report as written is USPAP compliant. And while some attention will be given to the appraiser's reporting obligations in USPAP, we will also address the intent of the GSEs who developed the form, the regulations and interpretations surrounding them, and when appropriate, other users of the form. After the appraiser completes the development of the appraisal report and delivers it to the client, regardless of who the client is, some form of quality control or underwriting will take place and identify areas that may need correction or further explanation. However, in many instances, the appraiser may be the only source of data with nothing available for the reader to reconcile against. USPAP does not expect perfection, which would be impossible to obtain anyways. But if you're an appraiser relying on others to review your report and ask for corrections, well, that is never considered to be a best practice. Every attempt should be made to deliver a well-formed and cogent appraisal report telling the right story your story. Before we get started, if you're not already a subscriber to the Class Valuation channel, consider subscribing. It helps the channel out and you'll be alerted to the availability of new content. We appreciate your support and if you like this video, please remember to smash that like button. The first section of this module will provide an overview of the Uniform Appraisal Dataset, also known as UAD. To improve the quality and consistency of the appraisal data for loans delivered to the GSEs, also known as Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the Uniform Appraisal Dataset was developed. It defines all fields required for an appraisal submission for specific appraisal forms, and it standardizes the definitions and responses for a key subset of the fields. The UAD was created to allow for consistency in reporting data in appraisal reports. UAD formatting is required by the GSEs to allow for the electronic delivery of the primary appraisal report forms you see here. Now there are exclusions to UAD formatting requirements and the property or form types excluded from those are the manufactured homes reported on the 1004C or the appraisal updates or certification of completion reports reported on the 1004D, small residential income properties reported on the 1025, and individual co-op units reported on the 2090 and 2095. The UAD standardizes the presentation of data for multiple appraisal form fields such as dates, values, quality of construction ratings, condition ratings, views, etc. The UAD allows for certain standard values, formats, and abbreviations within the report. The UAD provides a list of allowable values for certain fields, and those choices are typically made available to the appraiser within their appraisal report form software program. The UAD also provides standard abbreviations to allow for more information to be presented by the appraiser on what sometimes may be a field of limited size. 
The UAD also provides definitions and descriptions for the various quality and condition ratings for properties. The condition and quality ratings must be based on a holistic view of the property and any improvements. When selecting the condition and quality ratings, an appraiser must consider all improvements to determine an overall condition and quality rating. The appraiser should select the rating that best reflects the property as a whole and in its entirety. It is important to remember that sales can have the same characteristics as the subject property, like the quality of construction or condition, view, location, etc., and they still could require an adjustment. There can also be variations in properties where one is superior or inferior to the subject property in quality or condition, for example, but not to the extent that a different condition or quality rating is achieved. For example, the subject may have new windows and floor coverings while the comparable sale does not. The houses are relatively similar with regard to all other aspects and both properties are rated by the appraiser in C3 condition. However, the market recognizes the value of new windows and floor coverings, and an adjustment can be applied to that comparable, even though it reflects the same C3 condition rating as the subject. Now, the appraiser must also describe the subject property as of the effective date of the appraisal on an absolute basis, meaning the property must be rated on its own merits. The rating should not be selected on a relative basis, meaning it's not selected on how the property relates or compares to other properties in the neighborhood. Additionally, the condition and quality ratings for comparable properties must be made on an absolute basis. Again, each comparative property on its own merits, not on a relative basis, and it must reflect the property as of the date of sale of that comparable property. A common misunderstanding about Fannie Mae's policy can lead to unacceptable appraisal practices. Fannie Mae provides an excellent resource called the Noble Appraiser Series, and it includes the Condition Rating Cloud of Confusion and the Quality Rating Turmoil. Both provide descriptions and photographic examples detailing the different quality and condition ratings, along with guidance on how they can be best determined. If you're at all interested in watching either of those videos, check the links in the description below this video for quick access. If you have any questions about the field-specific standardization requirements outlined in UAD Appendix D, it is a great resource with examples for completing each one of those UAD-specific fields. Note, the last version was written in February of 2022. A link to that document is also included in the description below. Today's video could not be possible without the use of these trusted sources. We encourage you to view the remaining videos in this series. And don't forget, if you're not already a subscriber to the Class Valuation channel, consider subscribing. And if you like this video, please remember to smash that like button. Thank you for taking the time to check this video out and have a great day. Thank you.